This is the iHockeyTrainer.com B blog for the week of November 15th, 2010. Uh, this is just some general info on hockey and the, and the hockey world at, at large. What we have is headshots in the NHL continue to be an issue. You have Joe Thornton and Shane Doan being suspended for certain certain actions on the ice, which would have never been suspended before. The NHL is taking a very, very strict policy regarding blindside and headshot hits. And uh, the players seem to be responding. There have been instances where players are pulling up. This is a direct result from the education and the, uh, the strict penalties that they are enforcing. I really believe that down the road, they are going to have to start to look at coach and team penalties um, to be implemented as well because I think that there's still a reward system in the NHL for guys that lay out punishing hits. Even though you might get suspended by the league, you will be rewarded by your team for your physical play and because the physical nature of the game really is an important factor into winning. So I really do think that down the road they might, might start have to enforcing stricter team penalties and or um, coaches getting involved as well. Another interesting topic has been the Guy Boucher versus Patrick Waugh um, verbal b- battle, if you will. Patrick Waugh last week saying that Guy Boucher, while during his time in the QMJHL, has has kind of forced the players to play more defensive hockey and has really um, put handcuffs on their offensive and skill development. Uh, Guy Boucher has uh, put it together a system or very innovative new defensive zone uh, style where he has three players really converge on the puck in the corner and then they transition up the ice as a group of five and uh, the goal score may has gone down a, a little bit in the QMJHL but you can't blame my coach for trying something new and being very successful with it he did that in the Q he's done that in the American League in Hamilton played against it last year very very difficult to play against and now he's implementing it in Tampa and the guys uh, there seem to love playing it so I think you're going to see more of this, this type of hockey but uh, it's very innovative it's very new and uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge for other coaches to try to find a way to beat it. That's part of the game. It's no different than when the trap was starting to be implemented by the Montreal Canadiens back in the 70s. The NHL All-Star Game, they're trying something new, which is having two captains now, uh, you know, basically grade school style, pick their teams. And I think it's a great idea. It's going to you know, spark lots of discussion and debate who's going to be the captains and who are they going to select. I think that the NHL would love to see, of course, their two-star uh, and marketable assets being Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin start to pick their squads. I think it's a great way to uh, add some more fun element for the fans as well. Um, maybe the next step could be, uh, if you really want to go old school style, just throw all the sticks in the middle and start tossing them on one side or the other. I think all of us have played pond hockey or recreational hockey the same way at some point, and it is a... Uh, very fun way to play. It'd be nice to see NHLers start to do that and really take it back to that grassroots level. Uh, other notes, Carey Price, Montreal, off to a great start. Um, not being playing dual role with Yoroslav Halak, who's now in St. Louis. Uh, maybe just giving him the ball and run with it is just the confidence he needs. He's been very, very strong uh, to start. He's, I think, 10-5-1 and one with two shutouts and has been Montreal's best player on most nights and is really a big reason why they're, they're near the top of the standings in their conference. But that goes... Uh, you know, there's a direct correlation to some of the goaltending issues in the NHL this year. You look at uh, the two starting goaltenders from the Stanley Cup Finals last year in Antti Niemi and Michael Leighton um, in Philadelphia are now both backups on their respective teams. Uh, two years ago, Marc-Andre Fleury, Stanley Cup winners, had his struggles on the Pittsburgh Penguins and has uh, found some extra time on the bench. Uh, even star goaltenders such as Ryan Miller and Roberto Luongo have had some issues to start of late and even a guy who was virtually given the starting role in Boston to Oko Rask uh, in the summertime they were trying to unload Tim Thomas and his contract even put an outstanding uh, trade offer to all NHL clubs saying we have this goaltender would you like to pick him up but uh, Tim Thomas very competitive guy off to a hot start I believe he's eight and one or nine 
nine and one to start to start the season. So what you have is a very competitive environment for NHL goaltenders, where they can't take anything for granted anymore, and uh, they got to earn all the, all the ice time they get. Um, another big topic right now has been the uh, issues, the injuries. Um, excuse me, the, the injuries to start players to start the year. From Zach Parise to uh, Jason Spezza, Brian Rafalski, uh, Dion Phaneuf, Marion Gaborik, Marion Hosa, all have been hurt for extended times to start the year. And what you have is teams uh, really struggling and juggling to try to fill those high skill positions. This is a uh, part designed by the salary cap era is when you have injuries to your star players, you can't just fill that void. You can't just go out and get another five or six million dollar guy. Um, they're not very, they're not very, you can't really transition from one team to another. So it's a real true testament to a team's skill level, their depth and their overall system with their minor leaguers helping out and having your third, fourth line guys with enough skill level to get up to your top four defense or your top six forward units and some power play time. So teams that have that depth are able to hold on for an, uh, to make it to the playoffs throughout the year, even if they have uh, those injuries to their players. You look at a team like Detroit last year, which lost so many man games in the first half of the year, but were still able to make the playoffs and make the second round. That's It's really difficult in the NHL to do, and it's a true testament to their system, their scouting staff, and their minor league uh, player development. Um, another uh, interesting news is Mark Messier, great leader, everybody knows, has now made the inevitable transition into coaching and has taken the reins over the Canadian national men's team for two tournaments, the Deutschland Cup here nearby in Munich, and he's also uh, taken the reins at the Spengler Cup in Davos, uh, which happens just after Christmas. It'll be interesting to see. Mark Messier has been a great leader and a captain in the NHL, and now He's going to start uh, coaching, which will be, I think, great for some players to, to learn. And um, hopefully as, as he gets on his career, we're going to see him in the National Hockey League behind the bench someday. And I think it would be uh, kind of neat to see. The, as for the website, we do have the poll results are in. And um, for some reason, everybody started to pick with their hearts. And the Toronto Maple Leafs won our poll by a landslide. More, almost half of you, half of all votes were we're believing that the Toronto Maple Leafs will be the best NHL team and the, uh, the Canadian uh, team in the NHL this year. Uh, I do suspect we have a, a user out there called Super Marv that really uh, believes, in, <laughs> believes in them. So we're going to have to uh, maybe up your cardio and strength conditioning for this month for your training, Marv. But uh, the Vancouver Canucks were a, a distant second and the, uh, followed by Edmonton, Montreal, Calgary, and Ottawa. So... Uh, uh, thank you all for voting, and it's uh, provided some great discussion and insight. Stay tuned uh, as our next poll will, will directly involve skill development and what, what's the hardest skill to develop and learn slash improve. So please uh, go to our, our, our home page and start to uh, vote once again. Uh, it's been fun, and uh, we'll get the results to you in about a month's time. As for hockey here in Austria, we've... Uh, we, we dropped our game to our next closest team, which it, which was Innsbruck, dropping us down to uh, second place. Uh, we have a great team here. We're just uh, right now finding a difficult way to play a complete 60 minutes. Uh, that's an issue many teams face, and uh, we play great, but a few mistakes can cost you a game, and uh, we're going to continue to work on that as we get into the playoffs, as we push towards trying to win a championship here and uh, it's no different than minor hockey the game of hockey is so competitive where you can play great for 90 percent of the game but that 10 minutes may cost you and that's uh, you see the the margin for error has has been drastically reduced so um, everybody has to be focused and disciplined for an entire 60 minutes to win in this game and that's uh, that's a lesson that goes right from minor hockey to junior college minor pro and and now here for myself here in Europe. Uh, please stay tuned to the site. Uh, it's been great. Thank you for all the feedback. And uh, stay posted as we will be providing some uh, definite strategic um, insight for, for you young guys to start implementing as you get into the, the holiday season and the, the all-important all Christmas tournaments. So good luck. Thank you. Stay tuned. iHockeyTrainer.com, your personal skills coach. Good luck.